Well, hi there, racing fans, and welcome to the definitive July uh, call on the whole card. We are going to give you exactly what you need to know, because we've studied all weekend. I know that uh, Paul and uh, Kevin Che, they both don't look too good because they spent a long time out last <laughs> night studying the card. Kev, nice having you with us. Thanks, James. It's great to be here. Um, not just the Vodacom Derby in July, we've got the World Cup football, which has been fantastic. Wimbledon starts this week. Uh, it's a full week of sales, everything. So if you're not busy this week, you're never going to be busy and uh, enjoy your days because the nights you're going to be sleeping. Okay, so we've got you as a Vodacom Derby in July winning jockey on here, which um, is very important. We've got Lev as a Vodacom Derby in July winning trainer. That's right. Fantastic. 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 And Nostradamus. Fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, am I what doing the show on Monday next week if Leff wins the July? You or, definitely or, are. Or are we all are. going to do the show straight from the keg? Yeah. We might have to. <laughs> <clears throat> the point being, we have the World Cup on at the moment. And you mm. two guys, one being a Manchester United supporter, you've got a couple of your players that don't look too good cruising around that uh, World Cup. You'll see and you've got a couple right? of Tottenham boys. And um, what do you think of the World Cup so far? Fantastic. It just shows that the, the smaller teams, to use that term, have become stronger. First two, quarter, first two fourth round matches went to penalties. It's much tougher. You saw people park the bus. You saw Spain have possession without creating chances. I think they look for, like uh, Arsenal at their best. I think the, 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 the tactical mistake for me has to be the, the manager who made a change when there was a corner against them. And uh, the, the boy got up to score. I'm trying to think it was Colombia or somebody. And they were out. Colombia's okay. playing England now. Yeah, with their, their last match. No, to okay, me, the yeah. tactical blunder of the year. You never change when there's a set piece or corner. It's a golden rule of football. He whipped the boy off, and everyone has still lost their focus and attention. Header, they were out. Amazing. So, yeah, it might, it might even have been one of the African teams. Now, and I remember discussing with <coughs> Neil Tovey, and we were saying, golden rule, you don't do that. So, well, you talk about tactical errors. If you watch the Grand Prix, mm. they all pulled in because it was a, a flag uh, to change their tyres, and Hamilton and um, Bottas never pulled in. And ended up costing, well, they both blew up, so both went both up. And went wrong. I've got to give credit. Who knows? I, James, I've got to give credit to um, Russia themselves as a host nation. Wonderful. The, the, just the presentation and what they're showing us live, the, the beforehand, the interviews, the coming onto the pitches, it's just absolutely amazing. And the fans, are, I think, I've never been so excited for Russia in my life before when I saw those. I mean, the commentator, I wish we had a clip of that commentator when he saved the penalty for them to go through. It was just the most amazing one minute of, 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 of commentating. Uh, I don't know who the guy is. Laffy, you know his name. He's the, he's the old school of uh, the comic. No, he does all the big sides. I can't think of his name offhand, but... Is it Englishman? Englishman, yeah. And he just, and he just like, the way he just said it, the, the party now has just started, and yeah. Spain, unfortunately, must feel the pain, and da 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 yeah. But I agree with you, Lef. I think Spain were by Ooh. far the best side, and I thought Russia actually played well. Let's defend yeah. and defend and defend. Let's and, get yeah. through the extra time and take our chances on penalty. I don't think Russia's going to go through the next round, my personal yeah. opinion. What I saw Who they got Croatia? I think they got Croatia. Croatia, uh, a very quick side. They, were, they yeah. were on the button last night. If you watch the game one after the other, Croatia were running like they had their heads cut off and, and, and Spain and, and, and Russia were just passing the ball around. So you got to, I think you've got to start up in your game now. What about the first game between... Um, as Argentina and France. France. Uh, how was that game? Don't cry for four three Argentina. Don't, don't no, cry no. for four three Argentina. Ah, yeah. For me, I think uh, France. Yes, have a good enough players around them. Well, that's why the bottom line. Why did they bring on the striker so late? One Man City, Aguero. One swallow doesn't make a summer. Yeah. 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 And he should be playing. The, first, the three of them should be playing up front. If you want to no. score goals, put the three of them up front. Uh, they're Absolutely. suspect at the back. He, they went. Um, Ronaldo is the same story. He, well, he had to do everything. He, they, they've always spoke. said, Kev, they've always said Spain and, and uh, France are packed with great individuals who play as individuals. And, and uh, France have got a couple, of, uh, the, the couple of guys there that are really good. A couple pa of packed with guys. it, James, yeah. every position. Yeah. Yeah. Packed with it. No, they've got Giroud, who's useless. Yeah, well, they played with Adam yesterday, yeah. you know. Well, but you know, they've got good players and they've mm. seen it. They've, they've gone through. 
They're 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 one of the favourites now. With I, the think Croatia. France, I think France. I think France going to make should make the final because they got a very, like you say, packed with good players, but. They play with themselves. I mean, they, yeah, they, 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 they all want to hold the ball. They're not a great team. There's a team effort, you know. Yeah. But they, they've got the, they've got that youngster Mbappe. He's got the speed Mbappe, of a microwave. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. He outpaced uh, <laughs> the the centre half from uh, Man City. You've obviously got one of those Russell Hobbs. Because yeah, I got a Russell Hobbs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I give my stuff half a minute. It's done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's what the goal Listen, is. Listen, we got to do some <laughs> racing. We've got to talk about a bit of racing. We've talked now about the sport. And um, we're going to have a look at three to follow. Well, we watched some barrier trials on Saturday before the races, and I love these barrier trials. I think that they're a great uh, answer to whether a horse can run or not. And Dennis Wright stepped out of Philly. They won the first barrier trial by six lengths, absolutely doddled in. But we picked the second one, uh, the Master of My Fate. They were both Master of My Fate. So we picked the second one, which was named was Master Gambit. And why we picked it was because the time was two seconds faster than the filly. So let's go and have a look at this barrier trial. Um, we'll talk you through what happened. Yeah, uh, just to say, Kev, this uh, is another Master of My Fate. They, they get rolling. That and, and, and Mashari are way too good for the others. Absolutely, Laffy. Just have a look at this horse in front now, the action. You can just see that horse is packed with just its action alone. You can yeah. look at that action. They've Laffy. got speed, these two. Speed is an understatement. It's faster than your microwave, Laffy. But, I mean, <laughs> this, uh, but the rest of them are out of it. But just look at this action. Laffy. I mean, you yeah. don't have to be a rocket scientist to work that out. It's, what it's happened floating. with this horse was that he, he fluffed the, uh, his starting stall certificate before. He's been to the races and he got withdrawn. Wouldn't go in the pens. He had the Monty Roberts uh, halter on. Yes, yes, that's and right. this is, came right. back now again. So, but just put this horse in your notebook because actually both of them are posing and they did, they did the fastest barrier trial since the inception. I hope they don't trial. bump each other. Well, that, no, that, the on, one's on a three-year-old. On Polly. Yeah. One's a three-year-old, but that's mighty impressive. Bred by Thomas Kral, very impressive. And uh, keep your eye on uh, Master Gambit uh, for next time that runs. Then we go, and we're going to have a look at Turfentine because uh, Matthew de Cox got a syndicate called On a Mission, and this was one of their first runners from this crop. And uh, the filly's name was Elby, and I know there was a lot of chat about it, and I think it went off just about favourite, but just Green has got the better of her. She looks very nice, and we wish him the very best with On a Mission. Let's go and have a look. Yeah, Elby's a philanthropist, and the talk was a good each-way chance. It gets into the race quite quickly. There's a lot of speed. Your winner is a horse called Boss Babe, who comes with a run down the inside for Candace Dawson. Uh, Candace had a very good day with a couple of winners. The favourite was Josie. And this was uh, Mark de Kock. No, let me get it right. Lucky. Uh, it was Lucky's horse, sorry. That was the favourite. But uh, the horse we found is in blue. You can see it up in the Vanguard. Yeah, that's uh, quite surprising for the, for the Mark de Kock horses. You know, they normally come from off the pace here. But as you say, up there in the Vanguard, geez, Laff, you can see the cold weather they're having in Joburg. Their track is really taking a hammering. But yeah. they carry on racing. They have to. That's... That's part of the game, but... Horses just bowl along the top, they just yeah. float over the top. Float over really the top, yeah. That's, yeah. That's yeah the pacemaker is, 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 is going to get tackled by LB now, but look at the white down the inside, Boss Bay. But this is a smart debut. Stayed well, on, stayed yeah. on. The, the, the winner had had a run and looked quite progressive, and this filly stays on very nicely. She gets run out of it by another one that's had about four or five starts, but um, she'll go on, this filly, and she should give them a lot of fun. And, you know... Hats off to Matthew and his team putting together the syndicate. Let's hope that they yeah. have a lot of success. Absolutely. Um, and we go from there to Turfentine. Uh, we looked at race four and uh, Sean Terry stepped out one. Bred by Northfields, uh, Robin Brass, and it's out of a very good Medaglia Dora mare. This looks like it can run. Let's come pick him up. Yeah, I thought uh, Away in the Woods would be the horse to win. And uh, Away in the Woods runs a good race. And uh, gets right into it. Away in the woods is on the inside. I thought this horse is just about a banker in the pick six. It goes well. But the front two ensemble and the horse we've found, which is uh, Vida is Bella, the Duke of Marmalade, they come screaming up the outside. As I say, it's Candace Dawson again. 
left this was ready to go a, a trip. Yeah. So, uh, and to to see it having this much pace and, and be up there in a sprint is a, always a good sign for me. And uh, watch uh, when Sean puts us uh, around the corner. I'm sure he'll he'll give it another run before the end of winter or something. But when this goes around the turn, I promise you this. This, yeah. this is some serious horse, but, but it's good to see them. These good stayers showing early, early pace in, as yeah. a two-year-old. It's very it's, good son. So it's uh, a great son. The winner son. ensemble is run um, in uh, the Ralph's colours. Uh, that's uh, uh, you know she's got some good form this filly. She ran yeah. well with blinkers last time, got beaten ahead. But watching the the winner just it knows what it's doing and um, blinkers. Vida is Bella comes. Very Ooh, fast, very really, close. Really, you'd want to be with this filly next time out. Around the turn, and the other also, the winner had blinkers on and everything. So, um, good very, debut. A very good debut. I mean, well done to Sean. Sean's got some lovely uh, babies, mm. uh, James. Uh, he's got a string of them. He's got to just dodge each other. You know, it's not easy. Yeah. But uh, he's on song. He had his three winners on Saturday on yeah. uh, Breeders' Day. So well done no, to we'll Sean. We'll come to that later. But yeah. let's um, uh, go and see what shouldn't happen. You know, I've been looking at this horse. It's got very short legs. <laughs> James is just saying, give us a kiss. That's all is that saying. all? That's okay. all it's, it's a typical give it's us a kiss move. still got short legs. Yeah, you very short legs. related James. to Johnny. It's a pony. Johnny yeah. G. Yeah, yeah it could be pony. related. Yeah. Anyway, you can watch the full unabridged version on um, uh, YouTube, www.goldcircle.co.za. And uh, we'll go and see what uh, was the plum of the week. has got three lengths to make up. King of Chaos Oz to run and Miss Bulsara is towards the outside, but it's still Al Sacra in front. Second place is Lord Silveria. The Grey now lays it down. Then comes Streetwear, Quirari Viking, Miss Bulsara. Lord Silveria comes at Al Sacra. Lord Silveria clears away from Al Sacra. Mambo Symphony is third. Then comes Bush Pilot, but Lord Silveria will teach them a lesson today. Oh, he's nice. Lord Silvera has won it by three. Second goes the way of Mambo Symphony. Then came El Sacra in front rank. <coughs> 22 to 10, even 5 to 2. A little 5 to 2 available on Interbet about this. You, you look at this horse. You look at his form. Um, he's had four starts, and he looks progressive. Yeah. This could be your July horse next year. I mean, the way this horse won was yeah. very impressive. You look at his action, another horse. Oh, he's action. nice. Oh, he's yeah. nice, yeah. yeah. Uh, he's got a great action. Uh, Sumanga was very easy on him. Yeah. And they backed him like they knew the result. 47 to 10 uh, to 20 to... 18 to 10. 18 to 10. Yeah. I mean, listen. I'd like to back them at 18 to 10 like that because you, you never looked at that. Yeah, and... Um, and as you I, said, I a strong to, field. I spoke to Sean about it and that's why we put him up and uh, he, he liked the horse a lot and he said he's a very, very progressive horse indeed. So, uh, bred by Mr. D.C. Tehran, owned by Chris, obviously, Danica Sil Silvana out of a Lady Linny Mare. I think it was uh, raised at Bush Hill Stud, this horse, but um, he's a very, very nice horse indeed. Uh, maybe it was raised at... Um, um, raised at Psilocytone. Connemara, maybe. Connemara. Maybe, okay. yeah. Anyway, one of those. Uh, we're talking about all these guys uh, in the near future. Let's take a break and we'll be back with um, Current Affairs. Best race time odds, transparency of betting markets, friendly and super efficient staff, the ability to negotiate odds, a full service tote with no limits, which is very important for exotic players, loyalty program, speedy withdrawal of funds, full odds, multiple betting, and excellent in-play markets. These are just some of the many reasons that come to mind as to why I believe as a serious punter there is no online operator in South Africa that can realistically come close to matching what Interbet has to offer. Put simply, there's no other site like it. And the ability to negotiate odds adds to my fun and enjoyment. Interbet, 
where the professionals bet. Hi and welcome to another edition of Current Affairs. We've got uh, two races to show you. We're going to show you the Breeders' Million, which was run here at Gravel, and then we're going to show you the Irish Derby, which uh, is a, always a very big race overseas. And uh, we've also got some racing news for you. And Jim, uh, a bit of racing news today? Yeah, we've got a little bit to chat about, but uh, maybe we should just talk about uh, Breeders' Day. It was a good day, as usual, Sean Terry um, you know, took home a lot of the spoils, but yeah. he took Matador Man out of the um, mile, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which to me was a, a, a surprise. I would have thought you'd take the, take the check. They would have walked away with the money. Yeah. Uh, the horse would have won it in a canter. And, um, but they, they're waiting for the, the, the big July, one. you know? Yeah, and you know what? As, as we say on the golf course, greed is a terrible thing. Yeah. But it might be better than PE. It's not greed, because they would have gone for this one. I think it's uh -huh. nothing to do with avarice. I think it's eager. You know, you, uh -huh. want, to be, you want to be in the Vodacom Durban in July. I think if he ran on Saturday and he ran next week, I uh, would have, because I think he's got a chance. I think he's got a chance next week. A lot of people say yeah. he doesn't stay. I, I think the, the travelling, bringing him down, da -da -da -da, win, take him back, bring him back Why down. Why would you take him back? Take he's back. got a yacht here. No, I mean take him back to Sommerfeld. He's got to travel he's got to go up, down. Yeah. Plus he's at a gallop. So you, you know what, he wouldn't have had to gallop if they... They just to take the bridle from the gate and they would have come. come. If he's running in the, in, the magic, in the million on Saturday, he wouldn't have had to gallop on Thursday. Yeah. Well, What's the he would, he would have no, had to, no, would have had to come here yeah, and it's canter. It's a condition of the race. Kevin's right. He would yeah. have had to come here and canter. canter. Or, 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 or else canter in Joburg on video. Yeah. 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 Or he could have cantered at Summerfeld. No, but I think he is at Summerfeld. Yeah, well, there you go. He would, have, yeah. he would have come down. He would have had to come down. He can just yeah. cant it and then... Uh, but still... The but anyway, they've made the decision. It's all it's fine in the sky. Okay, but the point is, is that uh, the, um, the million uh, ended up uh, opening... Uh, the, the run of the race was Mark Dixon's horse. I mean, just what a gut Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm amazed that he, he hadn't, because he'd probably gone over ground seriously before, because he's such a good galloper. He really runs them off their feet, and he's, he's a superb horse, and... He's Barker Hall, so there's every suggestion he'd get the trip. The winner who beat him over the mile of short head is Barker Hall. Yeah. So uh, I think that a, a lot pointed to uh, him staying, and a lot of people thought, I oh, know he's a sprinter, but he ran, the as you say, the race of his life, uh, heads up, heads down, cost him. Yeah, okay, well, let's go and pick him up at the start, at the uh, uh, thousand meter. We're going to watch the, the Kwasilu Natal million. Then start, then the bayou, further back in the runners, morning catch. And then we follow heaps of fun. It's about eight or nine lengths off the leader. Then Intergalactic and Glider Pilot in the back seat. Twelve, thirteen lengths off the leader. And London Call finds itself two lengths in front. Subtropical is in second. Unagi's third. Romany Prince is back in fourth. Then Scrabble and Dawn Calling. Further back, the Bayou. Africa Rising's got seven or eight to make up. Then Morning Catch. Behind that is heaps of fun, Intergalactic. And a long way last is Glider Pilot. As they turn for home and London call with the lead. Subtropical, the first one to challenge. And Argy's on the outside. Romany Prince is going to go through down the inside. Dawn Calling comes out with Scrabble. 
London Call, Unagi, Romany Prince between runners, then Subtropical. London Call's going to have to dig deep now. Unagi and Romany Prince. The last hundred and London Call just leads it. Romany Prince is trying to wear it down. London Call is showing a lot of courage and oh, it's too close. Maybe Romany Prince got there from London Call. Unagi's involved in that photo. Very close indeed. Well, terrific ride by Warren Kennedy and Brandon Arena on the runner-up. He nearly made it all. He ran a great race, London Call. But Romany Prince, uh, Ormond Ferraris, came into town and said, uh, I'm going to take this. And well done to him. And uh, his owner, his owner's been with him for years and years. Yeah, the, the, the magic, the, the Macardianus. Yeah, <laughs> he, so he, he had a very good also. We took to um, Dubai. That's yeah, a very, he's had some very he's good had some very good He's a hell of a nice guy. And I'll yeah. tell you one Peter. thing. Peter, you know, one of, one of the give you another little bit around. of inside information. I've never been able to... The, when you're right I've away. interviewed him a number of times, I've never been able to go as... You know, anything over, like, one syllable is hard for yeah, me. You, you know? battle with your surname. Yeah. Every time you're right away, but, firmly calls you one side, and you always get a little handshake. Yeah. Okay. Very, genu very generous man. Oh, uh, generous, you mean? Generous. Okay. So Romney Prince won it. Well done to all concerned. London Call, a great run. Uh, the Alexander Twins came into town with the Nagi. It ran a good race. Mark Kahn. And uh, I thought Subtropical ran well as well. Dawn Calling ran third the year before, ran fifth this year. Yeah, she just emptied out. Yeah, she know, emptied she out late. Yeah. So, yeah, well done. It's a, it's a wonderful race. The, it's the a lovely the money day. Up. It's a fantastic day. 200 grand, most of them. You go out the front when you win a race and the breeders have a say. And it... it just from my perspective as a trainer, Jim, I've got to buy horses of the sale. Yeah. I ran second in this race last year, and not in this race, the, the million on, on July Day, when El Mariachi beat Sniper, Sniper Shot. Shot. I got 200 yeah. grand for second. Yeah. These yeah. breeders' races, you've got to buy a few at the sale if you want to contest these races. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So we'll be at the sale Thursday and Friday and see what we can get. Yeah, yeah. I've been down, I spent a bit of Sunday down there having a look. I was quite impressed. Yeah, they've got some well bred horses down there. Nice Fantastic. Stock. People are realizing, boom. We had, the, breed, the, we had the breeders here on Saturday. Every race you interviewed a different breeder and, and the master of yes. the fate said, so this one's the, that one's the. There's, there's some, dynasties. Dynast there's, there's, a, there's just a broad spectrum of good stallions. Judd Potts, there's really good stallions down there. Some, as I say, I haven't looked at them all, but the ones I looked at, I, I marked out quite a few. So that was the, uh, the, the KZN breeders, and well done to them for putting on this, this race day and having the big race on uh, Vodacom Durban July Day. It's wonderful for us to try and get a return. Is that the million, is that the breeders as well? That million? No, 1,300 meters from last year's sale. From last they, year's sale. Come from from last year's I won it on the same, same yeah. jurisdiction. Big point? I won it on the same jurisdiction. Yeah, you won she was it, a, yeah. She was, a two, she was just, a ma just broken her maidens yeah. and she ran, it was a million. Is that yeah. the, breeder, is that the breeders? Yes. Yeah. Ah, yes. Well done, Kev. Kev, the, the, well well yeah, the pennies no, dropped. No, the pennies yeah. dropped. Oh, well, you got the cash. You yeah. were only worried about getting no, the cash. No, I was worried about the breeders' million mile. That's this one that's just gone by. That's just gone by. That's for all horses. I won with goat. Yeah. But it was only 250,000 then. Oh, gosh. And this is a three-year-old. The same year she won the Oaks. Okay. Now, let's go and have a look at what, for us, is a great race overseas. We managed to get some footage of the Irish Derby. Now, in the Irish Derby, you had the Guineas winner. The Guineas winner is a horse called, help me here, James, Saxon, Saxon Warrior. Saxon Warrior. Yeah. Now, Saxon Warrior had flopped in the Derby, and people thought it wasn't that good. And he, he comes back to run a, a cracking good race. But, you know, the, the, just, just to talk about this horse, it's amazing. After he won the Guineas, O'Brien, Aidan O'Brien said, we haven't had a horse like this for a long, long yeah, time. Yeah, he made it, yeah, okay? he, he was the, he was very, very excited about this horse. Yeah. Went to the Derby, didn't handle Tatham Corner, didn't look like it was the right for race course. Everything, for excuses well. made for this horse, Drew a lot of excuses. Okay? I watched the race, yeah. He ends up going to this race. Uh, they've got a pacemaker uh, with uh, Padraig Berry on it. That's a Rostropovich. Yeah. That goes yeah, to the that's front. Right. And then uh, <laughs> Aiden's son comes and spoils the whole party. Yeah. Um, Aiden's it, sons. Yeah. Well, he uh, used to ride for him. Yeah, okay? Aiden's sons. Aiden's two sons yes, come to sons. give his dad one. Okay. Joseph and Joseph, Donna Joseph rode Joseph it. trains the horse. Yes. And Donna, and it's owned by Lloyd Williams. Okay? That's right. Uh, James the runner ups by Frankel. Yeah. The third off by Deep Impact. Let me and give what's the winner by? Camelot. First you've got two of those. I've got two Camelots. I bought well, two you, Camelots. The, you should be doubling, trebling the You know what a great racehorse he was? Yeah. And if you, you go to Australia, you can buy them. And then, but Galileo fourth, Galileo fifth, Dubois sixth. 
These are, so that's why Camelot is, is going to be a, a very good stallion. A serious stallion. Yeah. Serious stallion. Well, so beat, beat the Frankel and a beat second. It's a great race to watch this because you don't know who's going to win until the last few jumps. And, and you think that, well, Saxon Warrior on his reputation, he's going to get there. He's going to get he there. He's going to get there at all. Okay, yeah. let's go and watch him. Platinum Warrior jumps away smartly. Carlo Baraghi in the center and on the outside, moving up towards the leaders, Rostra Povic, and also prominent towards the inside is DXB, who now comes through and just disputes with Rostra Povic on the outside. Saxon Warrior is close up on the inner with Latro racing next on the outside. Then in between horses is Night to Behold on their outside as they race now down towards the end of the first couple of furlongs is Old Persian with against the rail Delano Roosevelt. After them comes Carlo Baraghi on the inside of Bandua. Then comes Platinum Warrior and Theobald is at the back of the field with the Pentagon. But up front, Rostropovic takes over and leads down the far side to in second place now is Latrobe who's racing right up on the outside of against the rail behind the leaders is saxon warrior and then comes delano roosevelt with dxb next and they're closely followed by night to behold and towards the inside comes bandua as they begin now to make the climb to take them up on the far side of the track where going along in the lead is Rostropovich who's showing a couple of lengths in front now for Porik Beggy being followed in second place by Latrobe and Donick O'Brien sitting up close in third is Saxon Warrior with DXB in fourth and they're being followed by the Pentagon who's racing alongside Night to Behold and then comes Carlo Baraghi with Bandua towards the inside of Old Persian as they begin now to make the run to take them on the run up towards the top of the track and in the lead as they make the run on the inside Rostropovich Latrobe is showing second DXB is pushed along on the outside of Saxon Warrior and they're being followed by Knight to Behold with just after them Delano Roosevelt as the leaders now begin to make the run towards the two mark and in the center of the track Latrobe has come to join Rostropovich against the rail they're being followed by Saxon Warrior on the outside. Delano Roosevelt is staying on. It's Latrobe and Donick O'Brien on the stand side of a battling on Rostropovich. Saxon Warrior down the outside. They're racing up towards the finish. It's going to be an all O'Brien finish, but who's going to win it? Latrobe is going to win it for Donick and Joseph. Beats Rostropovich. Saxon Warrior is third. Delano Roosevelt four, and they're being followed in just behind by Old Persian and the Pentagon. But victory goes to the O'Brien brothers in the Dubai Judy Free Derby. Well, there we go. Latro by Camelot. What a great ride by Donica for his brother. I watched uh, the preamble afterwards. There was great excitement. The father came up to congratulate his sons. His wife came up. The mother came up. It was very, very that's, good. That's amazing, isn't it? it is. The whole bunch. Just the whole bunch. Ran of first, to, first to fifth. First to fifth. Do, do, do you think the old man had the needle or not? No, no, he didn't. He, no, was he, he uh, loves his kids. That no, I, I don't say he doesn't love his yeah. kids. But no, no, he, he's one and a half. Listen, rather his son would have no. than Dermot Wells. He, he's <laughs> a, yeah, or, or, yeah. or Jim Bolt. <laughs> Jim Bolt, yeah. Yeah. Jeez, they were all there. Halford, Weld, Johnson, Appleby, they all sent horses. But uh, well done. That was a, a very good race and uh, good to see the family can do it. But whoa, getting some support, the young man. And yeah. rightly so, no? Well, he's, you know, he was a Apparently good... he's got 160 horses in training. I'm Joseph. Sure. Joseph. Sure, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And wow. I left Camelots and uh, yeah, Frankel's. Uh, I mean, Galileo's I think his old man says, I'll take this lot and you just take that lot. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, it always ends up. Mm. It's not like the Pencels here. You know, <laughs> yeah. Gavin, yeah, yeah, Gareth there, Chesney there, they got yeah. that. The same, same type of thing, you know. Sorry. Okay, uh, let's talk about some that. of the news, James. Talking about Smart Call first. Yeah. Uh, Eventually. Yeah, won the Group 3, uh, Jim Crowley, Michael Stout. They came and tackled it and it ran on again. Yeah. She's always been a good filly, Jim. Yeah. She won the Met. I think, she went, I think she went off a little bit when she England. You know, watch the first couple of runs. I mean, they took her to Ireland. Yeah. She placed. She placed, yeah, but she left, placed, she got yeah. caught three wide. Yeah, and she's, correct. She's had no luck in the beginning. I think she just knocked her confidence out of her. And then the cold weather came and everything, the whole change, you know. 
Alec nurses his horses and, you know, he's good. Over there in England, they, they're hard on him, but, yeah. but they're good to them as well. But it's just a different... I think it's taken her that year to climatise and get into the system. You know what I put. found strange? When I was over in Australia, I got to speak to a former vet of Michael Stutz. And uh, she'd worked for him for many, many years. And uh, she's the partner of Demi O'Byrne. And she was telling me that Sir Michael Stout never spells a horse. You know, it's done too much, you're going to send it out. They stay in the stable, in the yard, every single one of them. This is which I, I found is completely different to what a lot of trainers do. Mm -hmm. You know, this has gone flat, uh, I'll, I'll throw it out. That I found very strange. Eh? Okay, Lef, I'll give you another little bit of insight on that. I've been to uh, Sir, Ma is it Sir Michael Stout, yes. I think. I've been to his yard. He's got a section down the bottom of his yard where all the horses are spelling, but like you said, they don't leave the yard. Yeah, they, they go to uh, light duty. Light duty, they and they have little paddocks and little they paddock, and they've got the walkers. Yeah. So they come out the morning when the first string goes out. Some of the horses go into the walkers. They do a walk. They walk for 15, 20, 25 minutes. Then they come back in their box. But like you say, they don't leave the premises. Yeah. They don't get that change. They stay there. They just move boxes. They just yeah. move. And, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, the horses like that. You know, sometimes you change your horse's box when you're yeah. training. It uh, does in the world of good. You know? I yes. think they've learned. If you move a horse out of the yard, sometimes it doesn't come back. Well, I mean, you guys, you guys will know. Start. No, you guys will know. Yeah. You send one yeah. to Moy River and send it. Uh, I hope it's coming no, back. You, you, you watch you, it win in Cape Town. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sure <laughs> I, I, I used to train that horse. You know, James, the pretty around. Polly. Talk about the pretty Polly. You know the connections there. The, uh, well, we all know the connections to the pretty Polly stakes winner was um, a filly called Urban Fox. Okay, and um, the, she's by Fox Wedge, third yes. Group One winner that he's had. And uh, the Pretty Polly is a very important race. It's, yeah. um, it's at the Curra, and uh, it's called the Judmont Pretty Polly. It's a Group 1, isn't it? Yeah, and uh, Aidan O'Brien arrived with the winner of the Oaks there. You know, it's a 10 furlong race. You think mm -hmm. that, well, the Oaks winner was 4 to 6, okay? And uh, her name was Forever to Together by Galileo. Who beat it? Urban Fox. Now, the connection Comfortably, is... Comfortably, James. Three and a half lengths. Comfortably. Three and a half lengths. William Haggis trains Urban Fox, yeah, uh, okay? Yeah, uh, uh, William. Yeah, William. So, um, the, uh, is he coming for the July? I don't know. He's always there for the Met. Well, you know, Bernard's... But, but Bernard's you know, I don't think right he'll be coming to July. You know, what's, yeah. you know what's run on the same day, James? There's that massive race in England. Oh, that's uh, for King George. No, it's not the King George. Eclipse. It's the other, Eclipse. Coral Eclipse. Coral Eclipse, Eclipse. Coral Eclipse yeah. on the same day. He's got so bound, to have, yeah. he's bound to have a runner. Yeah. But James, okay. the Kiesvetter con connection there. Well, yeah. Um, the Wayne Kiesvetter, you know, he's the uh, uh, patriarch. He bought this at um, the December sales, as December mayor sale at Tattersall's, paid 425,000 guineas for it. And um, they wanted the pedigree. It's got a very, very good pedigree. And uh, that, he bought it for his stud. He's got a stud in Ireland, which is obviously part of Ridgemont Highlands. Oh, Barnane. Barnane stud. Barnane, yeah. And um, she ended up winning a Group 1. You know what she's worth now. Oof, you know, oof, it's oof. just unbelievable. And fantastic. Well done. You know, we, uh, the Kiesvetters, I think they, they're going to be very good for this business. They haven't been in long, but they, they oh, really great do Great to see them advertising in the middle of the rugby, yeah. their, their stud. That they do fantastic. things right. Yeah, they, do, um, they do things right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And to win a Group 1 in Ireland, well done to them. Um, just a couple of other little bits of news. The Mission, who's a Choisier horse out of a Dutch Choice mare's gone to Aquas Farm, standing for 13,500. He won the Champagne Stakes. Where he was it? bought off Magic Millions. Where's this in Australia now? Yeah, yeah. yeah, Australia. And he was bought off Magic Millions for 325,000. So he's the right type of horse for those Australians. Yeah. You know, Choisier, a reduced, reduced, reduced Choice Reduced man. Choice, great big mare, so. And he won a Group 1. Hong Kong, hey. four meetings to go. You know all about this, Kev. Zach Purton and Joe Marrera. I mean, Zach, Zach joined when I was there. I think I've mentioned it on the show before. He was the same year I went. And uh, he was a good rider, but he was a little bit of a head case in Australia. And he was getting a bit heavy. Yeah. And he was, uh, yeah. But, um, but he leads by three. He leads by three. Listen, left. Three, no, three, in, Ho three in Hong Kong is uh, it's not a lot with those two because they are actually yeah. dominating. So, so well, it could go either way? Could go either way. I'm... Uh, listen, I think Joe's a great guy, but I'd like to see Zach. Zach won it last year. No, you want to see him get the double. I'd like to see him get the double. Okay, and obviously the big news this week, Jeff Lloyd's in town. And everyone's interviewing, everyone's chatting to him. 
wonderful that we're able to get an opportunity to be able to see one of our greatest sons riding here in South Africa. And uh, we wish him the best in the July. But we're going to give you the breakdown on the July and the card uh, in your call. Well, the Vodacom Derm July is the race on the calendar. This is the race we all look forward to. There's months of build-up. Jeff Lloyd's coming to ride. I'm not sure that he didn't get given the lemon, but the panel will be able to tell you that. Um, and we kick off at 20 past four on uh, Saturday, the Vodacom Derm July. There'll be 50,000 people here in excess of 50,000 people. They'll all be here to watch. You are all wanting to know what will win this race. Well, we don't pack any punches. We're going to tell you exactly what can win and what can't win. So nice to have um, the two best guys uh, for this job on the panel. Mm. And first of all, let's uh, get the runners up and the riders on your screen so that you get an idea of what's going on. Well, there they go. Uh, African Night Sky is the favorite at two to one. Do it again, 13 to 2. Made to conquer, 9 to 1. For those of you that can't read, White River, 9 to 1. Majestic Mamba, 10s. Abashiri, 12. Elusive Silver, 12s. Then Tilbury Fort, and you go down. Dark Moon Rising, left. I see you're halfway down the bedding. Let's just no, start with you. Get you six. out the way. Okay? We've always flitted around 6s and 7s on the bedding, you know? Mm. Yeah, you're very good horse, James. People you, say you shouldn't have got in. Give us your, your take on it. James, it's not... You said you should have got yeah, in. You know, James, if I didn't get the race, I certainly wouldn't sling off about another horse I got in the race. That's yeah. just me. That's yeah. the way I am. For someone to, to make those, those comments, well, that's They're their scurrilous. opinion. That's, that's, that's their opinion. That's a it? good word. What's that? Scurrilous. They're scurrilous. Those yeah, are, yeah. That, that is there, but uh, if, if, if the, the guy who put the allegations at about us shouldn't be in the head of his horse, I'd like to consider why his other horse got in. But I'm not going to sit and debate that. I'm going to talk about my horse, James. And, okay. and our horse, it's not often you get two champion jockeys coming to you in time and saying to you, this is the best stayer you will ever train. You remember a mile, it's half his trip, half his trip. And we've seen, as he's gone further, he's got better. And he, he's going up to a 1900. In the 1900, James, he was eating up the turf. You know, the race before, in the sledgehammer, he was eating up the turf. And they went Canton Sprint. Doesn't suit him. Oh, well, aren't we going to get Canton Sprint here? You, uh, Kev will tell you more about how the race ride the July and how they go early in that. But I, I, I'm concerned that if a horse like, uh, uh, what's his name, Crowd Pleaser, doesn't eventually get into the race, there's, there, yeah. there's going to be a situation where you could have Duncan's Howells's horse in front or one of the Snaith Five in front. Abashiri. So, Abashiri possibly, straight in with one, he might have to go up there. You'll so up there. I've looked at the race many ways, but our horse goes into the race in good order. Going the extra distance, which is a big plus. And you've got the draw. We've got the draw. The draw. We've got the informed jockey. Yeah. We've got the draw. We've got a lot of... Just won a million, dollar, million rand, rand race. race. Yeah. There's, uh, there's a, a lot to like about our horse. And uh, I have no doubt that he'll finish the top half of this race. I have no doubt. I, I, I've, I've told the owners, back him if we get him. Keep backing him if we get him. Because you're going to get ridiculous odds. Back him for each way and hope for the best. Getting in, it's, it's, it's all the fun is just to get into the race. So, but if I was stuck in a corner, I'd say I, I expect a really big run from a very good staying type horse. Okay, well, I, I, I'm in your camp. I think this horse will be running on best of uh, yeah. most of them. And uh, the point being is, is that if they do go reasonable pace, I think you've got a real live each-way chance in this race. I and do, obviously, I do yeah. there are a lot of people pulling. What do you think, Kev? 
No, listen, I like the horse as well. I was, I was actually sitting with Laff last time he ran, and he, and he ran out of his skin. He, he, they were cantering around the back stretch, and uh, he was a little bit out of his ground. And next minute he was in the race, and he ran up to, to virtually win the race. And he, and he stayed on well. Um, I give him a, a huge chance. He's a he's a great horse at outside. I'd like to see him a little bit bigger than twenty to one left. You know, uh, no, the, 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 the bars, the bars have got, got 200, 125. But they're the loyal owners. Hey, you know? hey, he's got twenty guys in this horse, okay? And they're all multi-billionaires, <laughs> and they're all sticking cash up because he's telling them have a go each way. Yeah, for no, him. So like, how are we going to like, get on? I'd like to see him a little thirty-three to one. I mean, if you think we t we started taking sixty to one Ipitombi yeah. to start yeah. six to one. Uh, I'd like to say uh, no, he. I'd like to say, go, I'd like to to say you shouldn't have been taking anything on Ipitombi because the rules precluded you from having a bet. No, you're allowed to bet as long as you're betting on your own horse. I <laughs> know <laughs> that you <were. laughs> Can okay. I ask you one question? Yeah. Will this horse go for the Gold Cup after the July? Yes or no? It like, depends on his run. Oh. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, no, I, mean, I understand. Kev, every, guy comes... written, every guy has written said you've got to go for the Gold Cup. You've got to yeah. go for the Gold Cup. But it all depends on this race. No, 100% how he yeah. comes out yeah, of it. You know, you want them to it. come out sad. That, that, that would be the right race for him. Sure. Yeah. Okay, boys. Let's move on because uh, we've got to get through this field and I'm going to start with the uh, shortest in the betting, African Night Sky. Um, drawn in the middle, there's always talk about this horse. Is he as good as they say he is? Well, listen, uh, he has fluffed his lines before in Group 1 company. Yeah. Um, there's no doubt about that. He comes into nine without another scratching. Um, I like this horse in the beginning. This was Anton Marcus's first choice because I always like to pick Anton's brains four months before the thing. I said, Anton, if you got a choice of riding horse in the July, what would you ride for? African Night Sky. He was 12 to 1 then. I got a little bit of 10 to 1. Uh, now he's 2 to 1. So I've got a little bit, I've got 10 grand of the horse for 1,000 rand. Was the jockey choice correct? Wouldn't you rather put Anton, if you were Snake's position, put Anton on this horse? And put Vinnie Cook on the horse with 54. I, I can't agree with you more. I think. Uh, Anton's got a waste to ride 54. 100%. But also, too, Anton had an injury and it was a doubt and the doubt be bar be bar. We had to go through all that. But why not put uh, Bernard Fader Herb on this horse? He's riding a horse with a pound less. Yeah. Uh, no, no disrespect to Grant. Grant's uh, won, uh, ridden his last two stops. Bernard knows the source. He's, he was involved with him in the Winter Classic. For me, I thought 57. Everybody says Anton, I mean, Gr uh, Bernard can't ride 57. He rode 55 in Dubai. Yeah. If you've got, this is the July. You, 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 you do things that you don't normally do for the, the Scottsville meeting on a, on a Wednesday afternoon in the middle of January when it's 48 degrees. Mm -hmm. This is the July. You sacrifice and you go. Bernard will ride 57 on his coconut. And, uh, yeah, I, I agree with Kevin that uh, I think he's a very good horse. He's worthy favourite. He's, he's glitch, as Kevin highlighted, as he failed in Group 1 company. But well, that, does that make him a worthy favourite? That's the question. Uh, you, well, that's a very good question. It's a hard one to answer. You know, he has fluffed his lines. You know, the Winter Classic is for the horses that don't come over here for the big one, but some very good horses have won the Winter Classic. And James, bear in mind, the last leg of the Winter Classic is a mile and a half. So this horse stays... All day. Oh, yeah. he, he, his run when he got into trouble was over a mile. His next run he won, but it was Group 3 company. That, that's what it, I'm talking about. If you're against him, you're going to say he hasn't done it in Group 1 company. If you're for him, he's the best. He's beautifully bred. He's a beautiful horse. He accelerates as good as anything. He's, he's a top horse and he's got to have his followers. And I think maybe the jockey uh, decision was made by Snaith for whatever reason, but there were one of three guys who could have ridden him. And Grant's ridden him twice, and he's found trouble twice. All I can, my assessment of it is they're going on one run, and that was uh, the Met run, where obviously he should have got a better, bigger penalty if he'd run the first five. He didn't get the penalty, and they say he's well in. But I think the two kilos he got um, Could might be difference. his undoing. Okay? Yeah. I, don't know, he was uh, so I think that at, at 55 yeah. in the race, he yeah. would have had a, he would have been, would a, have been a very, yeah. very serious so, runner. So there, he didn't win easily, but he beat Crowd Pleaser. Yeah. Okay, Crowd Pleaser couldn't get in the race. Okay? Yeah. So let's move on. So we go from there to do it again. And he's obviously the three year old that looks like he's got the best form. But him and White River is very little between the two of them. And there is a kilo at the weight. Let's discuss the two of them in contest. Okay, we could discuss them together, but let's start with do it again, James, if I might just get a hold of shares. He's another horse that falls in the category of he's been found wanting in Group 1. I think he's a very good horse. When he won the Guineas, he accelerated, but have a look at his Group 1 form. 
the same as the favourite, you just wonder about. But he's lightly raced. It's a first crop of twice overs, a wonderful tick in their box. And uh, he gets a guy who knows how to win this race. This horse is very much alive for me. I'm just wondering whether he, uh, he's going to have it to do from that draw, Kev. He was favourite before he ran fourth in the, That's right. in the, in in the, the Daily, Daily News. News. He was favourite. My take on that was that was a flat run. And I watched him. I saw him in the parade ring. I watched him in the, in the race. I thought he ran a second run. Well be. Classic yeah. second run. It scenario. could well be. Okay. Could one well and a quarter be. length. It's not as if he was 15. No, but he minutes. just was like one pace. He went up you know, inside. He did. He was one, one second pace, after yeah. love. I'll put a line through that. Yeah. Anton Marcus is... What about, what, okay, White River ran in the same race, okay? Um, apparently, he was gelded two weeks before. It's uh, like, you know, the worst preparation. Not apparently, he was. Yeah. Yeah. It, was, it, was wasn't, it was. It was longer than two weeks, but it was no more than like three weeks. Because yeah. I remember the day it happened, and I remember I looked at the dates of the two runs. He's a very good horse, James. Ma, as I like to talk about your pros and your cons, the cons on this horse is 2,200 metres by Trippy. You know, we know that... Out of a uh, chance causeway mare. Yes, I do appreciate that. He's, I think he's a super... On the, on the pro side, he's a superb racehorse. He's got a lot of talent, a lot of ability. He's a good action horse. And now he's much more sensible with the gelding. So this horse is going to have plenty of followers, and Pierre Cornet is going to have to handle that draw. But he's very alive. Both these two horses you, you, you uh, put together, James, are both alive. Okay. Gelded on the 6th of May, just for the record. Are they, are they, One month. Are they the best two three-year-olds in the race? Ah, no, that's very... That's, that's I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much up with that, James. I'm pretty much up with what that. What about Yakeen? Okay, let's throw him in now, because he's come from Joburg. He's pretty much unexposed. But he's shown courage, this horse. He gets a reasonable draw. He's got a good weight. Um, is he good enough? Yakin yeah, drew one in the feature and ran six and a half lengths behind Sir George. Yeah. White River and Do It Again are a length and a quarter away. So on form alone, just on form. But there are different are, races, Kev. No, are different races, but I'm just saying that the surcharge form. You know, Tia Filio, they're going to get the trip. No, yeah. I'm not that saying... Was that, a, that was a 14 Yeah, mm -hmm. 10 Gun Salute. 10 Gun Salute was a Tia Filio. Yeah. And he won the 1900. Yeah. Running wide and winning. No problem with stamina. This horse brings the best record in the race percentage-wise. He's won 66% of his races. 100%. He comes from a yard that they, they wait in the winner's box, that yard. Yeah. And uh, he draw, he's drawn well. Is he experienced enough? I remember saying that about Sushi San a few years ago. Not experienced enough and it ran second. So with Michael de Kock, you never leave them out. No, 100%. And uh, I think this horse is improved. But I still do believe I'd, I'd be with White River and do it again ahead of him. Okay, so then we go to the filly, which is the, um, the three-year-old filly in the race, Fiorella. She's done nothing wrong, this filly. She's had an impeccable career. She's run up against the best. She gets Mark Khan, who's made a comeback. Is she good enough, or will she stay? I think she'll stay. I don't think there's a, dis uh, a, a stamina doubt. One and a half lengths, but I'm taking the piece. Has won two legs of the Triple Crown. <laughs> uh, beat Snow Dance, the wonder filly from Cape Town, and then uh, half a length to O oh, Susanna. If you if, if you want to compare apples with apples, she's as, as good as anything. She's uh, as good as any, I think the any pedigree filly. suggests she won't stay. That's what I see. You know, right. the pedigree, but yeah. her run suggests she will. Kevin's right. And what you put out there, she's gone 10 furlong. She's not big. She's as gutsy as they come. Gutsy. But it's against girls. Yeah. You know, uh, O Susanna and Snowdance might not have been at their best. Their, their, let's say their group one winning form in Cape Town. 100%. But she, she's very talented, James. Well, if you, if you take O Susanna, let's just take her in context. O Susanna won the Met. Yes. The lightweight, this yes. filly's form equates to O Susanna. So if she stays, let's assume that she stays, she's got to be a big runner. In this I, race. I don't agree with your equating a uh, Cape run with a, uh, a run up here, James. The Cape run was superb. Here there was doubts whether she was going to run. She, she, she got home uh, uh, way in Cape Town, she was way ahead of Dennis Drive's filly. Dennis Dreyer's filly was biting her girth in the finish of this race. They said she wasn't right, oh, Susanna. They said she's won two group ones. We're not going for the big race. And what do we have to prove? I think her cape form is superior to this. But I would not take it away from Fiorella to have a chance. I really think she's gutsy. She's small, but she's gutsy. 
Okay, the, from there, obviously, we go to Majestic Mambo is probably the horse that everyone is not really sure about. Yeah. I have a big question mark. Uh, I see that he's now changed ownership. I see Volgabos Drift have bought a share in him. Half, yeah. Uh, he has shown in his, uh, r r in his comments distress last time, distress the time before. Jockey fell the time before, that's not his fault. Respiratory distress shifted about top of the straight. Is all well with this horse? Now, listen, uh, um, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you the full story about his distress this as well, because I spoke to Paul Peter. He said every time this horse runs, he, he gives so much in the race, and you've seen him. I mean, he came from the crowd. He, he, gives, he wants to win every time, and afterwards, he's knackered. He sits here and he gets... Listen, Kev, I watch Arrogate run in the Dubai World Cup. That horse gave everything, okay? Every single thing that he could give, every inch, he was finished after the race. Yeah. And we said so, Lat, we yeah. you and I discussed yeah. it. He came back, he ran three times, the trainer made excuses, all said, don't worry about yeah. him, he's coming yeah. back. He got beaten every time he came back. Horses that run themselves into the ground don't go back to the well too often. It's a big worry for me. Yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. That is a big worry, but I, I don't know, I think his horse has got... Serious, serious ability. That's why you're here. We were listening to what you, you were listening to. Four saying. runs back when Monkswood, when he ran against Monkswood, it was the Guineas, was it? Is that when he fell off? No. The run before that, when, when Gunter Vruchelman ran him. Apparently he got out the float and something spooked him and he fell off the big, it's about a two meter high where the, where the, where the floats put the, the ramp down when they walk off. He fell off and he fell on his side. And they, they vetted him, and they said he's fit enough to run. The horse is running. He ran 13 lengths behind him. Then the next time with Anthony Delpes, nobody could ever, ever... Okay, well, forget that. That, that, that run. He no. looked like he was going to win it. He was gonna, he, I thought he was going to win it. He quickened so quick, uh, Anthony, before he knew what was what. He was on the horses. He was bomb at that one. His next run, he ran four near, uh, half lengths behind Heroes on a lost three lengths distressed, as you say. He got left. Now you start worrying. Why Where is he, he going to race? Okay, you're, going, you're making excuses for him. I, I think that there's a lot of minuses here. There are a lot yeah. of minuses. He's drawn 19. He misses the break. Where is he going to be? Yeah, no, he's he's gonna if be he gets started, he's going to be lost. He's, he's going to be going to... No, I no, think, no, James, my pros and cons department. Pros, and pros, great talent, great acceleration, can quicken up at any time. And uh, he showed in the Daily News, it was a brilliant run. In the brilliant. Yeah. But he was started off his career as called the Randy Racehorse. Yeah. He doesn't do himself any favours. He's yeah. going to come from behind him. This horse has a mountain to climb. Exactly. And yeah. I think he might, Did he go back to Joburg after the day? No, he's gone back, yeah. So he went back. He's not coming back again. Yeah. Okay. Right. Let's go through the rest. And there are uh, obviously Jeff Lloyd's horse we've got to talk about, Made to Conquer. Now, I, I'll tell you straight. I'm, my belief is I feel sorry for Jeff. Come yeah. all the way here. And he looks like he's riding the fourth choice. You know. If he's lucky. If he's lucky, <laughs> yeah. okay? okay he's this horse has not got the form to win this race. He's, no, he's a Group 3 winner. He beat Stratton. Stratton came into 1900 against all of our horses, and he got thumped. Yeah. So I feel Stratton would have improved, no doubt. He hung across the course with Grant Vanekirk. But this horse is a big, cumbersome horse. He's a, a slow-progressing horse, and I don't think he's got the speed to win this race. I think he's got a lot against him. Jeff will need to have... Uh, do a wonderful best from that draw with a horse who's sluggish. It's his he, last crack, and you know what? I'd love to see him on something better than this. That's what I, yeah. I, I really believe that. I know he's 9-1 to one in the betting, but that's because we've got Jeff Lloyd, Lloyd on him. Yeah, if correct. he had uh, anyone else on him, he'd be 90-1. to one. What price is he to run third? His favourite. <laughs> Hot favourite. <laughs> when, when, when Do It Again won the, won the Guineas, yeah. I sent Jeff Lloyd's wife a message on social media. I said... Tell Jeff to phone That's for this the ride. ride. Yeah. That's the ride. Yeah. Yeah. And then he did flap his lines last time, second run off the loft, but that was my original choice. And do you think he can win, Kev? He did. He, do I think Mate Tukong yeah. can win? He's won six out of seven. Uh, I, no, I think... I'll tell you what I'd like to say. Wherever Mate Tukong is, I think the favourite will finish in front of him. So do, I. so do I. Not because only the favourite, I think Do It Again will finish in front of him. Even Do It Again, yeah. yeah. So... Um, for me, I think uh, uh, it's, it's a pity, like you say, he's on the fourth choice. Jeff could make that extra little bit of a difference, knowing the track, knowing the race, knowing how it goes. 
He's not racing against the guys that he used to ride, ride against. Now he's got a little yeah. bit uh, uh, different too. But uh, Jeff will make sure that this horse, I think he's a staying He'll horse. He'll give it every chance. He'll give the horse every chance. Yeah. And like you say, I, I wouldn't leave him at the field. He'll okay. pay six places. Boys, we're running out of time, unfortunately. But So let's run through them quickly. Coral Fever, a drawn four. 60 can, kilos. Can he beat Abashiri at the weights? If you go back and have a look at uh, him and Abashiri... I think abashiri has got him at the weight. Which it could do. Draw one and uh, a lighter weight, and, and Michael's given it the two years to get to get back here. Michael's done a good job getting him back, but, but Robbie Sage is a great trainer, but I think with 60, he got it all to do. Yeah, okay. Gold standard? No chance. Elusive silver? Very good horse in his day. Favourite for this race last year. Quickens up exceptionally well. If we don't get the pace and this horse is uh, in the right spot, Bernard could win the, the Vodacom again. Well, he, could, he certainly could be there. Yeah. Liege, Summer Cup winner. Bad uh, prep. Not for me. I don't like him, though. Uh, yeah, I, and I think they need to go pace here for him. Star Express. A lot of talk about this horse. I don't think good enough. I'm it sorry can't stay. It's, it's, has it shown that it will stay? I backed it last time. Even, right if, even if they go canter, uh, and she's a lovely filly. Philly, lovely filly. I don't think she's good enough to win, but she is a very good filly. Matador Man gave up the million mile. Loves his track. Yeah. Loves the track. Ran, it got interfered with when, when it ran in the 1900s. Will he stay? Yes. I agree with you. I, I like the horse. I'll tell you exactly a quick story about the horse. He's a kind of horse when he comes into the straight, he's like a majestic member. He's got to get out, clear run, and go. He can't go between horses. Last time out, he went between horses. They bumped him, bumped him, bumped him. Da, 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 da. The guys were all here, yeah, the, the boys from Joburg. They said to me, Kevin, go and watch this horse's rerun and tell me what you think. He was stiff. Drawn 15, Shimanga, he likes to, he must pull him out to the outside fence and give him a clear run. I think Both of them will be going for the outside fence. Him and Majestic. Guaranteed. Member, and neither of them and, will get a run. And Fenikuk. And neither of them will get a run. Fenikuk will go okay. up the inside. Yeah. Um, Tilbury Fort, drawn 20. Yeah, he had, had a go last year. I don't think it was good enough. Uh, I think a lot. They say he's better since he's been gelded. Absolutely. He forms very good since he's been gelded. It's only three runs. No one I'd like to see the July more than uh, Mark Curry. Yeah, it'll be like great for Mark Curry and Lyle Hewitson, but also. Uh, yeah, I, these guys need to win the July. Uh, Mark Bass and them, Rocket Countdown. Uh, an unknown horse, James. You yeah, know, for he, me also, unknown left. You know, uh, he's, he's obviously a very good horse. He's locked horns with some of those good three holes in Cape Town. And uh, it, he, he nearly won the second leg of the, the, the Triple Crown. The he, won, he's, he beat White River, went, so he's got yeah, some no, he's a, he's, sort of He's a very good horse and uh, probably got it all to do, but good horse. And Randolph knows how to win this race. Yeah. Stewie, go boy. Okay, the Secret Potion, the Oaks winner. He's elusive Fort Phillies are very good, James. A fantastic stallion for Phillies, and it won the Oaks well. It beat uh, the Go Deputy horse Flickety by far. Uh, that's not enough to win it. No. But uh, Jeff Woodruff, he's a master. It'll be ready on the day. But for my money, it's great for a local boy, Show and Jerry. He's a local boy from the Bluff. I mean, from uh, Toti. Yeah. He's uh, him. He'll have all his mates up here to come and see it and try for the best. But uh, probably a little bit to do, James. I think okay. So. Give us your winner of the race and your best each way in the race. Okay, I'm just going, a winner in the best. I'm way. going 17, six. No, I don't want the whole field. I just want a winner. Three. Oh, sorry. And the best each way. The best each way, 17. Okay. And the winner, sure. Uh, I'll give you a horse. Uh, I think uh, uh, do it again. Okay. I'm going African Night Sky. I think very hard to beat. Uh, and uh, uh, best each way. I like left source, but I'm going to go. I'm going to lead towards number three, Abashiri. Mark Azzi had a chat to him. He's got this horse plum. He knows how to do it. He'll be the best looking horse in the parade ring. They're like a Certainly team. got a chance. Right, so you're going to have to listen to the Interbed podcast to hear what I think is okay. the best each way, okay, okay. and the best winner. Uh, as far as the race, race card is concerned, have you got uh, anything that you saw? Uh, well, listen, it looks like everybody's going to be back in the, I mean, bankering at Philly at the back uh, of Justin Snow Snow Dance, yeah. Snow Dance. She looks like she could be the, um, the banker on the day. The rest of the card, hmm. I think, guys, if you want to play a PA, if you get the PA, I think you're going to get some good money this year. PA is the way to go. Get your boys, all your club boys, put your 100 rand each. If you've got 1,000 or 2,000 rand, take your PA and sit back and enjoy the day. A hard days racing, some good racing. We've got the two-year-old fillies and colts, the golden horse. Group, uh, group two, we've got Mark de Cox in town with his uh, bombs. It's, it's going to be a fantastic day's racing. It's only Monday, James. We've got Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and still... Up until four o'clock on Saturday, things are going to change. Anything for you? 
Jeff Lloyd's best rider is in the loss race, the 12th race. Pavosky. Yeah. Pavosky, yeah. that's Pavosky. my tip. Okay, I think Jeff Lloyd's best rider is in the second race. I watch this horse barrier trial. I think this horse can't lose. It's drawn 14, unfortunately. If it wasn't drawn 14, it would be 14 to 10 instead of 4 to 1. Traces. I Traces. think this is a very, very good horse. Yeah, I love the way Barry Trout. They, they, they brought him here, obviously, James, because he's got yeah. one hour. Yeah. He's and he charge. went around the track like an old master. Jeff's uh, only yeah. got one hour as well, so they should get on the road together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they're, both, they're both in charge. They're okay. the one hour the next, the next best bet is race three, Pack Leader, because I think Pack Leader was the stiffest horse I've ever seen, yeah. apart from Gold Tax, never to get in the July. <laughs> because let me tell you, this horse is a very, very good horse. He should win this consolation in a common canter. You don't the think you don't think you get a bit of drama from the last year's winner? No. The crowd pleaser and, and, no. and maybe this also Roy, Roy had enough? This also won. I was very okay. impressed with his gallop. Don't forget crowd pleaser's please gallop. It was absolutely... Yeah. He's yeah. a different horse now That's, than he was. And so ago. was Pack Leader. Very good okay. gallop. Well, Both of them. between the two, take the swingers. Take the swingers. Thank you so much, guys, for coming in and uh, joining us. Can't uh, wait we to hope change that, my mind tomorrow again. Yeah, <laughs> we hope that uh, you've all enjoyed that and it um, helps you find the winner of the Vodacom Derm July. Until next week, you have a great week's racing. The first Saturday in July. Two precious minutes. 4.25 million rand. Saturday, the 7th of July. Whose time is it? The Vodacom Durban July. Africa's greatest horse racing event. Your world of winners is now online at www.teletrack.com. Simply subscribe to log into your account from any mobile device in South Africa and access a wide variety of content from our membership package options. Listen in via a live audio stream, catch live racing locally and internationally, or view a wide variety of Teletrack magazine shows to stay informed and updated on the go at any time. It's never been easier. Go to teletrack.com now.